Hey everyone, thanks for listening to Sex with Emily. Today's show, we're giving you a hand. That's right, the best hand job tips to spice things up. Oh, and while you're down there, how to keep rhythm during oral sex. We're also talking flirting at the gym and getting your bedroom mojo back. All this and more on the latest episode of Sex with Emily. Let me ask you a question. Are you getting enough? I bet you'd love a little more, right? Well, adamandeve.com wants to give you more with 10 free gifts. Who doesn't want 10 free gifts? First, you'll get a sexy surprise for her, and second, a specially selected toy for him, and third, something that you will both enjoy. Plus, you get six full-length movies on DVD. And if you're looking for toys, you're like, oh, what do I get? I don't know. Check out the Jimmy Jane Hello Touch. It's one of my favorites. It's a great couple's toy or to use individually. And you just put these pads on your fingers and your fingers become vibrators. It's awesome. It's for men, women, use it on each other. You'll love it. And number 10, though, what you get in this whole amazing package is free shipping on your entire order. So what do you have to do to get these gifts? It's not hard at all. I know you guys can do this. You just go to adamandeve.com, select any one item. It could be a new toy, sexy piece of lingerie, a fun game for couples. Just enter offer code EMILY at checkout and you'll get all 10 free gifts. Go to adamandeve.com today, select one item, get 10 free gifts, free shipping, all this and more. Enter offer code EMILY at checkout. That's adamandeve.com. Thanks for listening. Look into his eyes. They're the eyes of a man obsessed by sex. Eyes that mock our sacred institutions. Hey, Emily, you got a boyfriend? Because uh, my man E here, he just got his heart broken. He thinks you're kind of cute. A girl's got to have her standards. Oh, my. Do women know about shrinkage? Isn't it common knowledge? What do you mean, like laundry? It shrinks? Can we not talk about sex so much? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God, I feel so good. Being bad feels pretty good. But you know, Emily's not the kind of girl you just play with. You're listening to Sex with Emily. We're talking about sex relationships and everything in between. For more information, go to sexwithemily.com where you can check out all of our podcasts, sign up for our mailing list, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram because, you know, Sex with Emily goes beyond the podcast. We are working 24-7 in everything we do to make sure that you're having amazing sex and amazing relationships. That's what I'm about. That's why I'm here on the planet. Right, Menace? Right. How you doing, man? I'm good. How have you been? I've been so good and I've been so proud of you. Thank you. I Why? Saw, well, because I learned about your life through Instagram. Oh, thank you. Um, you can follow him at Menace on Instagram. And he ran a 5K? No, 10K. A 10K, dude. That's nothing for people to actually I've run. I've only seen you but... run to get like a Coke in the middle of, you know, in the middle of like, the show uh, the or something. Show. Yeah, no, it was, uh, it was fun. My buddy who's really into running, he challenged me to do it. And then so I just had to see it through, which I did. And, uh, you know, it's been really fun. How it was feel amazing. Help- do you feel healthier? And- yeah, I feel I have a lot more energy and stuff like that. So I'm going to keep at it. Okay. You are going to run. How often are you running? Um, Every day for about like an hour. When the hell? It's so hot out. When do you do that? Oh, uh, I mean in the gym. In the morning. Yeah, I'm yeah. so proud of you. It's air conditioned and in the gym. Yeah. I mean, dude, I was really, I got all verklempt. <laughs> Why? Because I know your weight has been a thing that's for years fluctuate back yeah. and forth. And you're like, I got to get to the gym, got to the gym. But you like, it's so true. And this is. This is a great lesson for people. Anytime you're trying to start anything in life, it really helps to be held accountable. Whether mm-hmm. you're trying to run run a race, get in shape, have better sex. If you have a goal and someone that you're accountable to, like mm-hmm. your friend who challenged you, it just helps us. Because when, when we're in our head going, we should be at the gym more often, it doesn't happen. Yeah. But you had like a bet or whatever it is. Yeah, I definitely need that kind of motivation, like to be challenged. Yeah. Because I always like, I, I like to be you. challenged and people tell me I can't do something and I always... Want to prove You're them like, wrong? I can do that. <laughs> yeah, I can do that. I'm really proud. And how's your sex life because of that? Do you feel like you want more sex now than before? Yeah, I definitely have a lot more energy See? instead of just wanting to go to sleep. That's great. But I haven't seen you forever. I, I, I went know. out to Boston, New York. Um, oh, there was a bunch of Sex with Emily listeners in Boston really? that wanted to meet up. Yeah. Did you meet uh, up with them? I, I didn't have a chance, so I apologize. No, no, because I was only there but for like a day and a half because I was off to New York. And then... Um, and then I've been running into Sex with Emily listeners all over the place. See, okay, in L.A.? In L.A., yeah. All, I How mean, come that doesn't happen to me as much? Huh? People, you're more rec- – you're because like, of misadvised, people recognize your face? Um, Maybe that. Also, then also I do a radio show in right. L.A. on the Woody Show you uh, talk about. Yeah, the Woody Show, morning show. And um, 
And then they know that I do this show because I do talk about this show on that show. I love that. And yeah. And, and we brought our little mascot today. Yeah, Churro. We're absconding my, her. My baby. Menace, Menace has a baby, a new baby called <laughs> Churro, and she's a little French bulldog. Yeah. And she also has her own Instagram account, which is wildly popular, <laughs> called My Dog Chiro. And, and I just want to hold her and kiss her and yeah. love her. She's precious. Okay, well, let's put some pictures on it. We're going to put some pictures on our Instagram, Sex with right. Emily, and do a little video after. And you can always, our YouTube channel, we're taking it really super seriously now. So check it us out and on YouTube as well. We'll do a little video. I'm happy you're doing that. I know, right? We've been talking about it for 18 years. <laughs> um, and also, I've got good news for you people, speaking of stuff we've been talking about. But we are going to start doing a call-in show. Sweet. People have always wanted us to do that. We've, you know, dabbled mm-hmm. here and there. But on Wednesday, October 7th, 2015, from 1.30 to 2.00 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, I want you to call in with the number one question you've always wanted to ask me, but we're afraid to ask. Or you just one question that's on your mind about relationships or sex. Um, I can't give you the number now. It's top secret. But just subscribe for our newsletter, which I promise you will love because people tell me all the time they love our newsletter, which is so interesting, uh, which is because it's great. But Facebook is Sex with Emily and Twitter, Sex with Emily and Instagram for more details. We're going to be promoting it because, as you know, on the show, we read a lot of your emails, but I just want to talk to you, peeps. Sometimes I got to get down. You don't tell me enough in the emails. and I want to know. We're going to give you real time advice. Yeah. Right, That's Manus? great because, you know, when we first started out together... We were doing a call-in show. We were. And it was fun. And it, but it sucked because it was on Trestle Radio. And, you know, you can't just say, openly just say blowjob. Oh, no. she was giving me a blowjob and it stuff like that. It was much more strict So then. it's great to, you know, uh, have people call in and have it We love doing that. You know? Except for you were stressed. But you know what's so funny, Menace? So there's a thing called, the, what is it, the safe harbor after a I was doing a show after 11 o'clock at night on radio Mm -hmm. from 11 to 2. And it's true that you can say certain things in the safe harbor, but you still, Mm -hmm. like, can't say blowjob. Being on Loveline now, which Mm -hmm. is still safe harbor at at 10 to midnight, you can't believe what we say. We say blowjob, jizz on your face. You know, it's like, what? Like, I was, like, trained. Like, Menace is going to come over here and start yelling at me. No, but also it's, uh, you know, you're under the umbrella, which you are a doctor, too, which you should promote, too. But you're under the umbrella of uh, Dr. Drew. And Dr. Drew is very well respected, and uh, you can get away with that kind of lot, right? That kind of but stuff. I think but if you're a, just some Joe Schmo radio, which I was a Joe Schmo radio wacky something then. radio guy, like you can't be saying that kind of stuff on there. I remember our like masturbation show. That we're like once every half hour. I'm like, how many times masturbation? So I was like, when you're bopping the baloney, when you're whatever. But so um, you got to be creative. You got to be creative, which we were. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, so we're taking more calls, in, and I'm really excited. And if this works, you guys want to call in at that time, we will definitely start doing it more. Yeah. And then also September, hello, happy September. This is our official back to school month. So we are celebrating this month, September, as the back to sex basics. So all month long, I'm going to be visiting all those essential sex and hookup skills that you might have learned in high school or you thought you learned in high school. (laughs) Because I went with a lot of guys who think they know what they're doing and they're way past high school and you forgot along the way. So we're going to focus on a new sex lesson each week that will help you be more confident and a more sexy lover. So Love check it. out our blog and social media for more of that. And then one more thing about that. Uh-huh. Sorry, guys. Got to get this all out so we can get into the meat here. Hustler Hollywood. Every month I'm teaching a workshop. This one is Back to Sex Ed Basics. It's Tuesday, September 29th, 8 to 10 p.m. And we're just breaking down those basics. Safe sex, masturbation, kissing, hand jobs, blow jobs, oral sex, all the things that you're like, I don't feel like I'm that great at this or what do I need to know? I'm going to give you all the little tips that you're like, oh, that's why it wasn't working. So you're going to love it. It's um, We have champagne, giveaways, RSVP at HH, RSVP at LFP.com. That's like LarryFlintProductions.com. Or just go to our website, SexWithEmily.com. Click on the banner. And they've been great, Menace. I know that you work late. Uh, you go to bed early mm-hmm. because of your job in the morning. But it's they've been great. They've been like, we've got tons of people coming. Listeners That's come awesome. from all over. So it's really, really fun. That's great. Yeah. I, it's so much fun, like, running into people that listen to the show. What do they say? They Just Menace! how much they love it and how, how long they've been listening for years and stuff like that. I ran into a guy at the... Uh, the D23 is basically the uh, Comic-Con of Disneyland. Right. In, or Disney. And uh, there was a hardcore listener there. It's funny because then they like, you know, it's it's a Disney thing. And they whispered <laughs> like, I listen to Sex with Emily. <laughs> I you don't know? like Mickey Mouse here. <laughs> yeah, That's but it really was, cool. yeah, it's great running into yeah and i've run into people at like disneyland and all just random places that listen to the podcast and it's great that they say that they've been listening to it for years 10 years some people well that's how we've been doing it so speaking of Mm -hmm. which 
Madison's getting on this, producer Madison, but we have to do our 10-year show before the end of the year. So after this, mm -hmm. I asked listeners last week, I was like, "Would you? do you want to come? Like, we are going to do a big show. I'm not sure where in Los Angeles. We're going to do a live show. We're going to have guests. Mm -hmm. And we got to just lock down a date today because there's only a few months mm -hmm. left of the year. And Churro's going to be... Churro! Okay, so Maddie just brought little Churro. Yeah, she's sitting here. She's so cute. I want to kiss her huh? and hold her and love her and Yeah, but then she's going to be like walking around. She's about to fall asleep. She's so cute. Well, they're going to take a picture of her. You have to see. I just want to kiss her all, all right. over. Yeah, go to the Sex with Emily Instagram, Instagram.com slash Sex with Emily, and you can follow Chiro. All that her, stuff. All her greatness. Exactly. I took her swimming the other day. She you, went swimming. Where? In your pool? Uh, no, I was on a... a Indian reservation up in... I saw those pictures. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? In uh, San Diego County, which is so much fun. Yeah, it was a great time. What it was cool, just like, in? just learning about, like, you know, how reservations run and, you know, the history of that kind of stuff. Is right. That's, that's pretty crazy. Just for fun or for... Just fun. Well, my girlfriend's... Um, Extended family is actually part of the reservation. Oh, so the elusive girlfriend, huh? The elusive girlfriend. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, she's the real deal now. I get it totally. Um, <laughs> What's up with your boyfriend? Uh, well, <laughs> I've been dating a guy for a while. Things are good, but mm -hmm. you know what? Something really weird happened. We're like, you know, it's good. It's good. We're are you keeping it a cash as always, or well, what? Okay, here's the deal. Uh oh. Talk about things changing. No, <laughs> we've been dating for like a year, but like casual. And it is true that. Um, Lately, we've been having, like, talks about it possibly, you know, like, seeing what we want, what we both want, and how it's going to progress mm -hmm. into whatever. I don't know yet. But the funny yeah. thing was, it was Labor Day weekend, and um, I have a sex injury, a wound. I pulled a muscle on my leg during sex. Like, mm -hmm. I literally cannot walk. This really? leg, it was, the last time I heard it was during a marathon injury. Uh -huh. And I don't know what I did. I wasn't in pain. I wasn't doing the Kama Sutra. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I guess it makes sense that I would have a sex injury, but I've never had like a leg injury. I can't even work out. I don't know what happened. Jeez. I wasn't doing anything crazy. It was pretty exciting. That's fun, so though. Sex is good. Yeah. That's, so wait, really good. why are you? Why am I having sex? Why are you? Life? No, no, no. In the relationship wise, why are you having like a high school type relationship? No, why? it's not that. Like, we. What are we? Are we going steady? You know what's why? Because we both here? wanted things kind of casual, and uh -huh. we didn't. We were friends, and we weren't really sure that it was going to what we wanted. And mm -hmm. now we're like, you know, just having adult conversations. Like, do we both want the same things? And we're we're having those like real conversations. How long like, does how that do you conversation? Last. We didn't talk about it for a long time because I was dating other people. He was dating other people. But yeah. I don't know. I'll keep you all posted as I have updates, but it's, right. it's very satisfying. Don't waste more than a day on that kind of stuff. Just be like, look, do you want to be together? Cool. If you don't, then fine. Then we'll just do what we well, do. Well, you know, next week I'll give you more all of an right, update. Please. How's that? <laughs> um, okay. So Time's we, running out. The hourglass is running. It is. Right, because you know? I'm almost dead. Just, no, but no, you shouldn't no, be together that like, long. I mean, no, you shouldn't let these things, because the thing is, it's going, but it's mostly me too. I'm like, mm -hmm. everything's good. I'm chill until it's not, and things get weird, and you don't mm -hmm. talk about things. And the thing is, I I kind of wrote, it's funny, because, you know, we always talk to people, like, stay in the relationship if you're having problems, but talk, like I say. Communication is lubrication. And I felt like we weren't really talking about the stuff we needed to talk about to know if we want the same things. And in relationships, it's like, how do you picture it? Like, what's your ideal, vaca ideal vacation, ideal relationship? And we start talking about like, whose relationship do you admire? Who's in your life do you look at? Because sometimes it's hard. People think, I got to get married, have kids, and this is what we mm -hmm. want, when really that's not what they want. Yeah. You know, it's been really interesting just reading about even, I'm reading this book, um, Aziz Ansari's book, uh, Modern Romance. It's yeah. really, you know, he's a comedian. And it talks a lot about how when like Match.com first started, how everyone was saying like, this is what I want. I want someone mm -hmm. who's six feet tall, blonde, and is Christian or whatever it is. And then they do, you know, you do the sort by that. And they realized that the algorithms they were using, people still weren't getting matched. And they realized watching people's surfing patterns online, like what they were looking for, wasn't actually what they say they're attracted yeah. to. So it's like a lot of times what we think we want in relationships or we think there aren't even choices because what you do is you get together, you commit, you've kid and that's not so you know me, I'm sort of an alternative relationship person so we're really talking about some of the harder things to see how it all goes down all right well and um, okay, well, we haven't even talked since the whole ashley madison debacle i know have we not we what haven't do you think about have that? you been covering it on the yeah, show yeah we've been covering it a lot i mean i think it's fascinating i don't know what kind of comeback they're going to make probably a big one they'll probably come under like you know restructure or reorganize it but i think it's no crazy. but then they found out it's just a bunch of dudes which i expected the entire time what it's a bunch of dudes the ashley madison there's yeah, no it's women. like 98% dudes. Right. And they have like six women. They're like, <laughs> yeah. hey, we really need you to fill this guy. Yeah, they got one woman in India filling out all the uh, all the profiles. It's kind of messed up. So maybe they will go under now. 
Yeah, maybe. And then I mean, life is short. Having an affair, terrible, terrible tagline. <laughs> I'm like, like I always hey, said, they like, did a lot for radio. So hey, you know, well, lots of advertising. They never made it to us, but um, yeah, no, I think it's crazy. But I think it does show how when people are dissatisfied with their relationship and they're like, this will be safe way to do it. Mm-hmm. Which meanwhile, most so dumb. Yeah, like, it's even banks, like Tinder. People on Tinder are married. Like, dude, banks yeah. get hacked. Like everyone. I could Why would you think that's safe? And the dumbest part is. All right. If you're gonna, if you were gonna do that, obviously you're already stupid, right? <laughs> and then this, you're not the, satisfied. The, and you're yeah, thinking yeah, of your yeah. Penis. Yeah, you're thinking with yeah, your dick. And the thing is, why wouldn't you make a fake email address? Do you know how many military and government email dot, addresses were on there? Dot gov. Dot, dot gov. Dot, like, are you all the that politicians? dumb? It takes two seconds to make a Hotmail account. I know. You know? Do they make Hotmail stuff? <laughs> That's said. a giveaway. I wouldn't date anyone with a Hotmail account. <laughs> um, but no, you're right. I don't understand it because people think that, that people still believe that when they're mm. on the internet, it's their own private Idaho. Even though the mm. thing you were just looking for on Amazon keeps yeah. popping up on your Facebook page, you think that's a coincidence? Like, it's all tracking everything everything that yeah. you do online. So just be careful, people. I Man. mean, I know, I know. And I think like if you're thinking of but, having an affair and you're in a relationship, the first thing you need to do is say, what would my life be without this person if, if I get caught? Because you probably mm. will get caught. Um, yeah, and if think, you're a guy, oh, you're going to get caught. You because rationalize guys your head, so it's going to spice you it up. Dumb yeah. and sla- sloppy right. when it comes to that. And it's like, do I, f- do I feel bad for uh, the people doing it and they got busted out? No, not really, because they were doing something crappy in the first place. Right. But I, uh, I was listening to Howard Stern, and he made a really good point about, what you, say? you know, about everyone sharing the information. It's like, regardless of what it is, you know, that that is stolen information. Right. You know, and it's being put out there. So yeah, that I I believe that part isn't right. But how would you prevent that from anyone? Like Amazon could get hacked with all Yeah, anyone can get hacked. It's made by cards. humans. It's not, you know. Right. Like the government like top secret shit gets hacked Everything, too. Everything all the time. You know? Hillary Clinton. Well, she used the wrong email. But the <laughs> thing is is that um but the thing is, if you are thinking of having an affair, which obviously, you know, 33 million people were on this, and that's mm-hmm. just the people who signed up for it, you really want to turn your attention towards your relationship and be like, you know what? I'm going to give this one last ditch effort. Have I done everything in this relationship to make it work? Because, you know, a lot of people, you get a little bored, time goes on, you don't, you might not be as interested in your partner, but there are ways that you can, you know, enhance that connection. Really figure out if this is someone that you want to be with. Don't just turn to cheating, say... Then you know that I'm going to give it three more months. We're going to go to therapy. We're going to talk it out. And then if it doesn't work, you end the relationship. And then you're, there's no cheating. It's not an affair. And then you can go bang whoever you want. I know. But don't cheat. Okay. You, you can break up with Speaking somebody. Speaking of you're not gonna die. Uh, websites. Good. Yeah. Pornhub. Sex Pornhub. And news. Pornhub launched a 25,000 university scholarship program. They did? Yes. And it's not just for porn stars. They want you to know they really, really care. It's just launched what it's called. It's describing its philanthropic and philanthropic endeavor, literally called Pornhub Cares. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. For a business whose entire reason is to be monetizing the masturbatory urge, it seems slightly high-handed. Uh, pun honestly not intended, but let some crack on and see what it's all about. The first public product of the Pornhub Cares initiative is a 25000 scholarship from Pornhub. The company is accepting applications from students anywhere, anywhere in the world. And the criteria for being awarded the money, I'm reading this going, mm-hmm. okay, wait, you have to like watch 60 hours a week of Pornhub? No. It's leadership, creativity, alongside, you know, tangible accomplishments, like extracurricular activities, all that stuff. And they want you to have a GPA average of what, like 3.2 and above? And so, so it's really, just, this is for customers? No. It's oh, okay. for, it's, they're like, we're making a lot of money. I know y'all hate us because we're porn, but we're mm. going to give back. But it reminds me of a story we had in San Francisco. Like, it was something, it was in San Francisco. It was some porn club that was doing really well, porn, some strip club. And they were like, we mm. want to give money and to something. We talked about this. And they were like, mm-hmm. no one would accept their money. Yeah. It might have been like the gold club. No, I like, think it we're was not the, money. the Farrell brother. Maybe. Yeah. They're like, we're not taking your money. But it's like, you guys, mm. money is money. Kids need money for college. It's more and more expensive than ever. How do you feel about this? Uh, I like it. I also believe that they should have a separate one for, you know, women or guys that are in the porn. That are in the industry and like help incentivize them to go back to college. Yeah, if they want to get out of it and just uh, go to school. But they don't want to get out of it. (laughs) I know they don't want to, but they can get a another person to do a porn it's not that hard i know well that's the thing you know? so i mean but you know I whatever think, i'll but see but that's great uh you know um 
Hey, they're giving money, but you know, twenty grand in school these days doesn't really go that $25, far. Twenty five thousand dollars is not a lot. Like how many people? Yeah, are it's not uh, but hey, person, we shouldn't be it? beggars. Can't no, be choosers. And I would have taken like, it. Hey, twenty five thousand dollars is twenty five thousand right. dollars. But I could see some people going, "I got a porn," and I wonder if they make you wear like a t shirt. Like I got a Pornhub scholarship. Like publicist, you know, like uh, publicizing yeah. their whole thing. But you know, I'm happy that they're doing that rather than just putting more money back in the company and not giving back. Of course, right. So I appreciate that. Is there um, is there another news story? We just have one. Is that it? Yeah. Cool. We can get into some emails. Unless there's anything you're really good at. Anything like sex in the news? I don't know. Anything in your brain? Sex in the news lately? I'm trying to think. I mean, uh, Caitlyn Jenner's taking over the world. You know, that's going on. The recent thing is she was on Ellen and said that she doesn't really support gay marriage. And everyone's like tripping out about that. But um, she's just not getting along with the transgender community at all. She's kind of like, that's not how she no, is. But I've been she... watching, I've been watching the show and look, this is what annoys me. <laughs> uh, that the transgender community is like, if you watch a television show, everyone around her is always constantly bagging on her. Like, oh, you have it so easy. You know, I had this rough life. I had to do sex work to get by my family disown me and like everyone's embracing you and everyone's holding against you i'm sorry i'm sorry that caitlin is being embraced way more is having right, a lot she had easier the money, than you she get the surgery and, she the thing. and all this stuff right and i'm i'm sorry it's like that but you shouldn't hold it against her right and it's these are same people that are like going on all these wine trips with her and then right. that they she's want to paying with her, but they want to bash her. Yeah, they want to bash her the entire. You should be doing this. You should be doing that. It's like, hasn't somebody told you your entire life how you should live? Yeah, and how did like, that feel to you? That, yeah, that's what it's just been like. Right. Uh, pissing me off. Hater, haters gonna hate. You <laughs> watching know? that. Watching that show. Did you like it though? I am Kate. Um. Well, it's very like. You learn a lot, but you know, with reality shows, you kind of just like you we just know. want you just want Kate to go to like uh, you know. Rodeo drive and just ball out of control and like go to the club and make it rain and stuff like right. that. It's just like okay, I get it. Like now, where's the where's the fun parts? Exactly. You know? So it's so, more like of an intense. They're like, where's Kim? It, where's Kim? It's very intense. Right. Oh, Kim's on there all the time. This latest episode I haven't seen yet is uh, Chris Jenner comes over and hasn't seen Kate uh, for months. Okay. And so I mean, Chris knew a lot of stuff that was going on, anyways. But this is where she actually like sees her face to face, and I haven't had a chance to see that yet. So. Okay, we'll, well see how a, that goes. My, it's on my list. But I definitely, so. you know, I support the community. I don't think I, you know, anybody as long can there's just... an awareness out there now that people are like, you know, it's... the gay talking about gay and lesbian issues mm-hmm. was a really big deal for parents and kids mm-hmm. to talk about. It. Now it's like transgender. Good. Yeah. Hopefully, you know, be more accepted and people will have a greater I, understanding of it. I'm just like on this whole new thing. Like, no matter what you are or what you do with your life, I, like. Don't care about any of anybody else's opinions or if I hear you talking about how somebody else should live their life, right. I really don't even want to be around I, you. I agree. You know? I agree. Because people usually who have such hard, fast opinions about what's right and what's wrong, they're just not happy with themselves. Just learn mm-hmm. on focus on your own life and what you want. Yeah. I know. I got They're a long time ago I got over what I, I, I don't want to live your life. <laughs> I got over a long time ago caring what, what other people think, truly. Yeah. I mean I want people to like me. I want you all to like the show, I want people mm-hmm. to like me, but I do my best to be a good person in the world. So I mm-hmm. can't like beat myself up if not everyone's gonna like us, man. Oh yeah, but dude. most people I do. Oh, text and speaking of liking every us, morning to the radio show. Oh yeah, dude, what you me. do. <laughs> but you know what? I would love if you guys, uh, Menace, This is really helpful when you said this in the past. Though, people okay. re- about people going to iTunes and like. Yeah, reviewing the show and all yeah. that stuff. You guys are already on iTunes, and mm-hmm. if you subscribe to the show, it would be so helpful if you you know you like it, you want to give a comment and rate the show. Uh-huh. Really easy to do. We would love that. Super easy. I Okay, I know not everyone uses iTunes because some people, they get really offended when you say, I don't use iTunes. I'm an Android user. Well, I'm speaking to the iTunes people right now. Uh, just do us a favor. Open up the iTunes store. Search Sex with Emily. And then you'll see a place to review. Uh, give it five stars, hopefully, if you, you if you think it deserves five stars. If you think it deserves one star, I mean, it hurts then our feelings, but fine. Out. Go, <laughs> I mean, go for it. But if you can just put in a review, that'd be great. That's a, I mean, the show costs you nothing. Emily does a lot of work. She has a great staff that helps her out, too, that do a lot of work yeah. and uh, you, to keep it going. Out. So if you can just do that, that'd be great. If you don't have iTunes, anywhere that Stitcher. you listen – like Stitcher, podcast, the, uh, one podcast One, anywhere that you listen to the show on her website, sexemily.com, just, just 
rate it, give it a comment, you know, whatever you got. Yeah, thank you, man. That's it. That's, 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 that's all we that's ask. That's, that's, that's all we want. ask. And I want you to be freaking entertained and have a good yeah. time. Okay. Um, Chira go really wants you to Chira, do it, too. I'm like, I want to go over there and just, like, <laughs> I want to just lay down with your dog and have a nap for six yeah. days. Okay, you guys have got to check out this video that we are about to post all right. the show. Okay, but first, I got to give a shout out to um, Permescent. Because mm-hmm. we will be talking a little about penises today. All right. Um, and since I love... I love all of you. I love being able to help you all have great sex, right? And I want you to have the sex that you dream in your head that you want to have. And maybe there's some things that are keeping you in the way. Maybe you're like, you know, my girlfriend, my partner, she takes so long to orgasm and I can only last three minutes or I can only last five minutes. Well, Permescent is one treatment that you can use that will actually help you last twice as long in bed. So if you last four minutes, you can last eight minutes. It's actually the only... FDA proof treatment for premature ejaculation, but you don't even have to be a premature ejaculation. We're not going to divine you. We're not going to put you in a box. I'm just saying it closes the arousal gap. Women can take between 20 and 40 minutes to orgasm. Men, it's usually about five and seven minutes. Some of you last a little longer when you close your eyes and think about baseball, but now you don't have to. Permescent, it's a quickly absorbing delay spray. Go to permescent.com and check it out. It will change your life and change your penis, which is a good time. Okay. They've been uh, a supporter of the show for a really yeah, long time. Yeah, like two that's, years. That's great. Aren't I know. they based out of the... They're around here. Oh, they're around here? Okay. Yeah, they're in this Orange County. Huddington but, Beach. Right? Huddington Beach, yeah. Oh, I mean, it's, one it's of my actually, favorites, Huntington yeah, Beach. Yeah, it's really cool. I mean, it's actually a really interesting story about Progressive, but um, that the the guy who runs the company now, there was a urologist mm-hmm. in, 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 in Orange County, and he was, he was kept trying, he's like, God, this is the big, like, it's really one of the lead, leading sexual issue challenges that men face. A lot of men are you know, have sexual dysfunction, they take Viagra, but PE is something totally different. So this guy was like a urologist, he had a really good family practice, and he's like, I created this thing. And he finally like tinkered, tinkered away, created Promescent, and this is a really sad story. He just had it in a bottle, it was just starting to have people test it, and people really liked it. And his, um, there was a, a vet that came back from the war, like from, a, like a, not Vietnam vet, but a, a war vet, mm. came into the hospital one day, and shot him down in cold blood, thinking that he was another doctor who had treated him like that guy was a little crazy. Wow. And he died. And he's got this whole family to support now. And so mm-hmm. the guy running the company, the CEO now, was his best friend. And he's like, mm-hmm. this is, I, I believe in this treatment. And so we really were like trying to help him and his family. But it's also this amazing product that's being sold in stores and taken over. So that's like the background on it, which is why I got so involved. Mm-hmm. And I love the company and the people and all that. So... That's what I want to tell you about this. Another note, we're going to move into emails. All right. Um, you guys, thank you for emailing us. Feedback at sexwithemily.com. And also, thank you so much for um, for giving us this, Menace, people are better at this now. Mm-hmm. Your age. Yeah. Where you're writing from. Yes. Where you live and how you listen. Sweet. Because that really helps us. It does. And then when you do the call in in a few weeks mm-hmm. on October 7th, then we'll really get yeah. more information. And you never have to give your real name. But- yeah. You can just say, but the location and how you listen. That's uh, great. We don't care if you change your, your age. Your age is always great. We're not going to hack your account and say, you're not really Mike, yep. you're Bob. But it helps like giving a background. Yeah. It's like, you're the, oh, I'm not meeting anybody. Yeah. Well, you live in Wichita, Kansas. Right. You know? Maybe like, you should pull a geographic. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey, Emily. I'm a 20-year-old girl from Belgium, and I've been dating a new guy for about a month now. We've slept together twice, but I haven't given him a hand job or a blow job yet. I tried to initiate once, but he flinched and said that since he is circumcised, he can't really have hand jobs without lube. I've even given hand jobs and blow jobs before, but none of these guys were circumcised since it's not very common here. She's in Belgium. So this is a new territory for me. Could you give me some practical tips of things I need to keep in mind? Maybe some things you might like? Thanks again for your help. I love your show, Sarah. So right, I thought Sarah. we would talk about some hand job and blowjob tips. We've talked about hand jobs for many years. If on you the show. go back into the archives, mm. Menace and I had a whole hand job debate that was raging, <laughs> like nothing else we've ever talked about. Because I one day innocently said, "You know, let's bring back the hand job, not exclusive of the blowjob, not taken away from the blowjob, but just to help spice things up." So anyway, I always said it was a waste of time. It wasn't. People loved it. <laughs> so here's a crash course on the anatomy of the penis, Sarah. Let's start there. So okay. To give a great hand job, you have to understand the anatomy of the penis, both cut and uncut, because each part has its own little personality. You mm-hmm. have a little penis has a personality, but it's all pretty much the same. Um, learn how to work with it. So unlike the uncut penis, a circumcised penis has a lot more landmarks on it. Think of it like a map. But once you get past the overall exposed nature, uh, it can pretty be it can be easy to navigate. So first, think of the base like a soldier, the shaft. It can take a lot of pressure, so don't be afraid of it and make sure you lube it up first. He is right. Now, when you're giving a blowjob, hopefully you create enough saliva. 
But a lot of times you don't. And so a great tip that I love, and actually Tart Carmen Electra, she was on the show, is to put a little lube on your lips. You can use like a flavored mm-hmm. lube. And so you're already lubed up, and then you take that, and then you go down on his penis. It feels freaking amazing, the lube. You can use a warming lube, a flavored lube, and um, let's just say you're wet enough from the get-go. Um, so make sure you lube it up first. The, uh, this is the this is the more of the hand job part. Mm-hmm. So the underside of the penis is where it's all going on. The erectile tissue right under the skin there, which makes, makes it super sensitive, so you give it some quality attention. Um, that's like where the frenulum is. So it's the little band of the tissue on the underside beneath the head. So if you're looking at your penis and it's a rack, it's like right underneath there. It's the head of the penis. Um, if the head of the penis is the money spot, this is a close second. Because the head of the penis, the coronal ridge where mm-hmm. it looks like a mushroom, um, that's also sensitive. So you want to lick around there, give it some quality time, and then move on to the frenulum. Um, lastly, the balls. You never want to ignore the balls, but you want to go in slow. Some guys like it really hard. Some guys just like it to be tickled, like those Ben Wall balls in your hands. Yeah, barely touched. Barely touched. You can lick it. Um, you know, Some of them play. want them in the mouth. They do. Play around. Ask your guy. Some guys are like, ah, no balls. But find out. See what he likes. So how does that feel, babe? Um, grease it up. If you're going to give a lube-free hand job, you might as well take a piece of sandpaper. Seriously, on the mm-hmm. penis. You really, like, don't you need it to be a little wet? And yeah. then, like, delete your number from his phone if you use some sandpaper on it. <laughs> um, your dude is correct. It needs to have lube. So, also, the great thing about the hand job, huh. you have two hands. You might be like, I've got a hand. <laughs> I know how to use it. But uh, you don't use two hands. Yeah, but, uh, see, our whole debate was solo hand jobs without any blow jobs attached it to it. It was about Yeah, them no, the you job. change it later on. Sometimes because it's Because you fun. started losing the debate. No, I never lost like, it. Oh, I said to incorporate the mouth. I'm like, no. Some... A hand job is a hand job, a blow job is a blow job, and then a blow job you can incorporate. You're saying the hand. never the two shall meet? No, I'm saying they would, but that's considered a blow job. But here's the other thing about it is that a lot of times women, we get tired during the blow job. Like I get it, like our mouths the the thing you have to remember is that the kind of pressure that a guy wants on his penis, he wants it to feel like a vagina or a mouth or a butt, whatever he's into. Mm-hmm. So you want that kind of pressure on it. You can't do the loosey-goosey. Yeah. Like you want, pressure is very, very important. So if you're using two hands, it's really fun because you can like grip the base of the of the penis between your thumb and index finger, like making an okay sign. So think of the base by the balls. This intensifies things, right? So you're like trapping blood on the penis, kind of like a built-in cock ring in your fingers. Uh-huh. And there is no law anywhere on the planet that says you can only stroke it with one hand. So you can do the twist, like at the same time, you can have two hands that are going up, two hands going down. You can be rubbing them both back and forth, like two hands on top of each other. And just make sure it's wet. You can do the the endless like up, up, up. So you keep like two hands going over the penis, over the mm-hmm. penis. And then you go down the penis, down with two hands. So um, like, let me put it to you like this. The more of his penis you're touching at any one time, the better. Like, I don't think you just want to spend time at the tip or just time at the balls. But mm-hmm. if you can encompass it with both hands and a tight grip, thumbs yeah, up. Cover it all. Okay sign. Um, also, like, pulsing and tapping and flipping with your open palms. So, yes, it likes tight grips. But it doesn't mean you could be squeezing it the whole time. You could be rubbing it together like you're building a fire or something. Because the truth is, variety is the spice of life and the spice of a hand job. So, you know, changing your grip can be a new sensation. Like if you've been holding it in one way, it's all about mixing it up. Like with different hands, you can even use one hand. And then once it gets really warmed up, nothing wrong with your hand. And then your mouth swooping down. And then swooping back up with the hand and then swooping back down. Definitely. Hand job tips, Menace? <laughs> hand job tips. Um, I mean, yeah, as long as you incorporate it with a blow job. I mean, guys that are the solo hand job. All the guys are thinking, like, man, I wish I could really have a, a blowjob right now. They're just... But it's a either I'm waiting to it get, be a Either I'm waiting to have an orgasm or I'm just waiting, hoping to get a blowjob. You know or what? maybe I'm just going to have penetration. But why not like, mix it up? What if you're giving someone a blowjob every night? You're going to be saying, who doesn't want a blowjob every night? But if you start off with a hand job, maybe uh-huh. it even feels so good because you have so much lube. You're uh-huh. using that grip. You're twisting mm-hmm. those hands. You yeah. could be... Using it and licking the corona, licking the ridge, I licking know, the tip. But just stay away from the mouth touching the penis for a second. Listen to what I'm saying. You're saying a standalone hand job. Standalone hand job from beginning to end to completion, right? What guy 
wants that constantly. I'm what thinking like, wow, she really, something? what if you're sick? She's really just giving me this sympathy hand job. She doesn't want to have sex with me or have give me a blow job. That's what guys if are thinking. You've been the with someone for a time. while. <laughs> you might just be like, honey, like my mouth, my throat hurts. I have a sore throat. Like, a job. Oh, this guy took me out. I guess I'll just give him a hand job. Dude, you just gotta him, spice things up already. all the time. You gotta spice things up. Okay, it's true. You gotta, you know, what is wrong with a little beginner hand? Oh, use a flashlight if you want. That's mm-hmm. something really fun. Um, and also, if you wanted to just, like, give him a jolt to his senses, vibrations. Vibrators, I'm telling you, men like a little vibrations in their perineum, uh-huh. which is between your, it's your taint, yes. and your ass, and your, you know, your penis, the base of your penis, um, the perineum. You can continue strokes and then use a little vibrator right there. You've never had this, so don't make fa- you- I'm not making faces. I'm I've been doing this lately. It You're- feels so it, good. The guys it, are like, holy <laughs> And if you want the friggin' blowjob to go over quicker because you don't want it, put a little vibe there. Your little See, bullet vibe. Here's something I've never shared before, and I what? don't know why I've never done this before. But as Emily's always explaining these things, she's using her hands and like giving me examples. Like so, when she talked about putting a vibrator on your your balls and your taint, she's actually taking her hand and showing it as she's doing that. I just wish just they could FYI, all be there so with you guys me. can have a visual. Maybe we should do a video <laughs> after with a visual. Can we use a penis anywhere? <laughs> um, so just make sure that like again, you want the tightness, the grip, you want to make sure that he can tell like it's not just this loose. Like didn't you have a girl give you a blowjob once who blew on it the first time? The a blue on it. She wasn't she's like Oh Was that you? She thought it was like I think a lot of girls have done that. Don't blow. <laughs> I know it's very misleading. It should be called a snug job or something. Yeah. Or a um I don't know what it should be called. A grip job. A grip job, yes. A sucking, vacuum sucking job. Okay. Next email. All right. Feedback at sexemily.com. That was a lot of one email. I hope it was enough feedback. Well, I wanted to give you all very specific instructions about <laughs> handling the penis because she's used to whatever. You guys, I'm just telling you that whatever. I said it all. Just mix in a little hand job once in a while. He'll like it. Dear Emily, how do I keep or even know when I'm in a good rhythm for sex and especially hand jobs, blow jobs? More and handjobs, little jobs. How do I have the confidence of a pro when I was a virgin before my current partner and he has had many partners before me? Jane. Okay, Jane, let me tell you this. This is a very common question we get asked. I'm not even going to get into the rhythm part. I want to talk about you being, you feel like you're inexperienced. Nobody starts off with a black belt in sex, okay? We all start out inexperienced. And he, this guy likes you. He's not thinking, God, she's really inexperienced, you know, all these other girls. No, no, it's not no. that hard. We're explaining out what we're telling you what to do, and you'll get better with each time you do it and ask him for feedback. That's a guy's Don't dr- beat yourself that's up. That's a guy's dream for you not to be <laughs> experienced. Right. I'm, you know? Like I know a guy super... married a guy because he's like, she hasn't been with a lot of guys. Like, he thinks that's hot. <laughs> yeah. So don't worry about that, Jane. Don't trip on that at all. So uh. I know that. And also, here's the other thing that guys like Menis have said to me, like, we don't want to be teased. We just want you to go right for the penis. But mm-hmm. I think a few minutes, a minute of teasing right before you go down, just you dive down in his pants and your mouth is all... Ugh. Try just like kissing around his stomach, like kissing around his thighs, like doing some things like that before mm-hmm. to get him roused, okay? So when it comes to rhythm, everyone is different. I can't tell you that every guy wants it really fast or really up and down. I think eventually they want you to stick with one rhythm. So the key is just like, first of all, feel him out. How is he doing with the rhythm that you're doing? If you have enough grip and it's wet enough or enough, your mouth is tight enough and wet enough, you're, you're pretty good there. And you got to be enthusiastic. You want to make sure that you're not like staring at your clock, your eyes are dozing off, and you're like like rolling your eyes at them. You want to be really into it. Um, some guys like it faster. Some guys like it slower. What about you, Menace? Do you, do you probably prefer it fast at the end when you're about to come? But what about at the beginning? Do you the care beginning, the- well, it's just not too slow, you know, and then have some pressure behind it. Nothing's worse than not having any pressure. Right. So pressure is number one. Mm-hmm. Um, not too slow, but if not there's a lot slow. of pressure, I mean, not like, yeah, yeah. but okay. So the rhythm is the you fluid want fluid motion, fluid motion, be very fluid, experiment with different speeds, you know, with your hands first, like we said, with the hand job and then bring your mouth into play. And if it helps, you can hum. Mm, that feels good. Use a vibrator under his balls. Use a vibrator on his shaft. Mm-hmm. I've again, most guys I've talked to about this or that have emailed it's been like, holy God, holy moly, can't believe how good that feels. Yeah. So you can also put a flavored lube on your lips, like I said, as you glide down. I said this earlier for the blowjob handjob part, because the wetter the better. A dry handjob, blowjob, not so good. Um, and there's there's no rule against asking how he likes it. Like if you're with him, you can be like, babe, how's this? Babe, make it sexy. Don't be like, 
okay, how was that? You hey. want to like sit up yeah. and be like, but be like, how's this, babe? How's my tongue circling around your frenulum? How is my tongue on your balls? Because <laughs> he's going to give you feedback because he wants it to feel good as well. Uh-huh. Does he want it faster or slower? Um, you can always ask him to give you a tutorial with his hand. Mutual mm-hmm. masturbation. Great way to watch how he touches himself when he's masturbating is likely the amount of pressure that he wants. And the kind of like, some guys stroke it in the middle. Some guys go over the top of their ball. You know, some guys mm-hmm. are grabbing their balls when they masturbate. They're all different. Because you know I've always said you put 100 women in the room and they will all be touching themselves differently. And I never say that about men because I'm like, oh, it's a penis. But it is true that men have different rhythms mm-hmm. and places that they touch on their penis that will make them feel good. That's I mean, correct. So, so watch that. Um, and as for confidence, seriously, it will come to you. Don't get so in your head that you're not experienced. Um, I want to say fake it till you make it, but just be it until it becomes no you. No guy cares about that. He does not care at all. You're and the more experience it. you get, the better you're going to get. And this is not, we're not talking years here. Where you're not trying to become like an Olympic mm-hmm. diver, okay? A flu, blo- a flu, a few blowjobs and you're going to be on track here. The only thing that guy cares about is if you're a prude. You know, and you're like, oh, right. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Then they're like, ah. He'll appreciate that you're improving mm-hmm. and putting effort in. And I'm not mm-hmm. even saying that you're bad. But women have these things in their heads that they have to be like porn stars, which, which you know, BTW. Porn stars might look great on camera, but they're not necessarily giving the most stellar blowjob like your guy wants. I'm mm-hmm. telling you that. So work with him together. Give him a good blowjob. That's the rhythm part. Stay in rhythm. Usually when guys are about to come, you want to stick with whatever they're doing. And you can tell when they're about to come because their breathing's heavy. Or you can ask them, let me know when you're about to come. But, oh, speaking of which. So I woke up to a text this morning. Okay, so thank you very much for listening to the show. And I'm glad you like it, Jane. And keep us posted how that goes. But I got an email this morning. And you'll laugh at this because from a, tech, a, fr- a, from a friend of mine, a text. She's out of the country. Mm-hmm. She's in South, South America. And she's like, I've got an emergency question. I'm like, go. She's like, I've been seeing this guy for like, she's just been seeing him for like five days. It's a vacation relation. <laughs> but she's like, Emily, I don't know what to do. I've never had this happen before. We're having sex. And we've had all this buildup. They finally had sex on like day four. Mm-hmm. And she said, he does not make a sound during sex. You've not had a sound. that before though? Yeah. Or? I told uh-huh. you about the guy I, would, I was dating for a while that like when he came, it was mm-hmm. like, I was like, did something just, he'd be like, like his eyes didn't change, his breathing didn't oh, change. Psychopath. So I don't know, but you know the thing is, some guys are really shy. Yeah. Maybe they like grew up masturbating in a home where it was, you know, un- like he was afraid to get caught and like would be like in purgatory and lose his eyesight. Uh-huh. People learned a lot of things in life that they're not allowed to masturbate. So I said to her, just encourage him. Tell him that like it's so hot to hear. His, like you start talking dirty. She's like, I did that. I did that. I'm like, well, tell him that it turns you on to know when he's about to come. You know, mm-hmm. like tell him, and you should be the one that start moaning. And she's like, he's still quiet. And she said, she said, I said, she goes, I want him just to throw me down and like be aggressive. I'm like, tell him. She's like, I did. And then he kept slowly love making, and she was like making Ugh. her crazy. So, so boring. I think that for everyone, like we like to hear sounds during sex. I mean, not the whole time. You have to be screaming like a banshee so your landlord mm-hmm. evicts you. But a guy that just doesn't make any sound. That is. I think it could be some intimacy uh, things too. Or he's so in his head that he was afraid. I said, yeah, but I asked I mean, him where, too quickly. Where, I asked her the whole battery yeah, of questions. Also, but where is where are they having sex? Are they having? Ex, ex, They're in a hotel room. She's hotel, like in a luxurious hotel. He might room. be, you know, afraid or embarrassed. I think some guys just learn that they should be quiet, mm-hmm. and um, I think he needs to unlearn it. And I kept telling her things like he won't do that. He won't do that. I'm like, you're on friggin' vacation. Go find someone else to bang. But um. That's what happens sometimes. <laughs> no, but I like guys. How long is she on vacation for? I don't know, like a week. But I really think that... Um, I <laughs> so really, she's going to be done with this guy anyways. I know. No, but I really just think that it's interesting to guys and for women mm-hmm. that wouldn't you prefer a woman who's making some noise? Yes. Doesn't turn, not screaming maybe. I, I know think you. every guy would. Yeah. And, and women are the same. But not over the top. Not like like, ridiculous. Some guys want over the top. I'm just saying we want to feel that we're connecting and audibly hearing sounds turns us on. Mm-hmm. So... You know what I'm saying. Okay, we got one more email. All right. Emily, my name is Melissa, and I'm 27 years old from Michigan, my home state. Uh, my home state, so shout out to Michigan. This, there's a really cute guy at the gym, and I want to show him I'm interested, but I always feel like the gym is an awkward place to pick up someone. No one looks great after a good workout, and I know I get annoyed with guys making rude comments to me when I'm on a machine. What's the best way to initiate conversation with him to get him to ask me out for lunch or something? Thanks, Melissa. This is an interesting question because I agree that I don't want guys hitting on me at the gym at all. I'm like, I'm doing my own thing. 
But guys aren't necessarily the same. I think guys are kind of psyched for girls to hit on them everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, first off, like, get his attention somehow. You can, like, start with eye contact. You know, you don't want to be, like, creepily, like, staring at him at the gym. But the great thing to do in any situation is to follow a formula. You want to observe something. So, if you're just standing next to him, maybe get on the tre treadmill next to him and observe something going on. You know, you could say, like, um, God, you know, do you think that these machines are always this busy? Is there a better time of day to come? See what he says. And that's a question. It's not a yes or no question. You do not want to ask, you know, just observe it, okay? And then after that, you want to share something. Like, I usually just, you know, have him be like, maybe he'll say something like, yo, I've actually found out if I come at 8 a.m., there's actually no one here. But at 9 a.m., it gets crazy. So here you are starting a conversation. What were yes. you going to say? Um, I, I don't have time. Okay. <laughs> Why? With the conversation? What were you going to say? No. Oh, I thought you were saying. And then you want um, to share something. That's, that would be my response. Oh, right. Got it. And then you want to share something. Yeah, maybe I should start doing that, you know, because I really love this gym, you know. And then you want to ask a question. So, uh, like I just said, the first thing is observing. Is it always uh, God? Is it always this busy here at 8 in the morning? I'm fucking this up. Is it always busy here this time in the morning? Uh, so, it's on a yes or no question. And he's you're uh, observing it. And he says, yeah, actually, I come in at 9 a.m. You know, usually it's much better at 9 a.m. And then she gets to say, like, really? Like, you know, and then you ask a question. 9 a.m., really? How long have you belonged to this gym? How long have you belonged here? What do you happen today? Whatever it is, you observe something happening, mm -hmm. you ask a question, and then you share something, you ask a question. So you're starting a dialogue. You're not just asking yes or no question. Uh -huh. And it's something at the gym, and you make it very casual. Yeah. You make it very nonchalant. There's nothing, like, people talk to me at the gym, and I don't always automatically assume you're hitting on me. I just think if you're observing something going on in the room, like, does the fire alarm always go off? What's with the beefcakes today? Is there like some kind of weightlifting? Con it doesn't matter what it is, but it's something that you can both observe. You share it. You ask a question. You start a conversation. Yeah, you're putting yourself out there. Exactly. I mean, you could just say like, you know, and also you don't have to ask them out right away, but start talking. A lot of times people go to the gyms at the same time. Or then if you do start talking, say like, hey, let's go have a smoothie after. You know? And <laughs> I think that kale. men, men. Do you CrossFit? I heard everyone in CrossFit is banging each other. Really? Yeah. Like, because he gets all heated like up hardcore. in the moment? It's because no one else wants to hear them talk about yeah, CrossFit. CrossFit. Because yeah, they're yeah. obsessed with they're CrossFit. They're obs yeah. obsessed it's with so it, true. but they're all sleeping with each other and drinking excessively. <laughs> that's Everyone that I know in CrossFit, well, that's they, they do CrossFit happening. and they pound a beer after? Yeah, they get hammered, they do CrossFit, and then they bang. And it's talk crazy. about CrossFit. There you go. Uh -huh. Sweetie, why don't you go to uh, CrossFit? <laughs> yes, go um, to CrossFit. You're going to um, get Melissa. laid. But I love this. I love that women are just being more bold about asking guys out too. Yeah. So again, I gave you the formula I usually give men, but the truth is just start talking to them. Yeah. Don't be creepy. Just start talking. I love it though. I love You're it too. You're encouraging women to talk to men. We should because a lot of men like menace. You, read, you didn't, couldn't read the signs. Mm -hmm. Women weren't always asking. You weren't asking women out. Nope. Every woman that you've ever laid probably made a hit on me. Totally. On you. So that works. Okay, we got to wrap up this pup. We do. Yeah. It was so nice seeing you. You too. I'm uh, I'm happy to be back. I had to cancel on you and I felt so bad. Oh. I got, uh, it was okay. We had Lynette Corolla fill in. Oh, nice. I love her. She's I know. And awesome. Heather McDonald was here that day. Oh, man. oh, it was a killer show, everyone. We had a show with Heather. Sorry, you weren't here. Menace mm -hmm. wasn't there. But Heather McDonald was on the show. It was a great show. Uh, Lynette was our co host. Mm -hmm. um, so it was fun. And also, just remember, you guys, on October 7th, we'll be taking calls, which is going to be awesome. And um, what else? Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Sex with Emily, and Menace. I'm just Menace, M E N A C E, on. Uh... Instagram and Twitter, and exactly. then Chiro's in the house. So it's Chiro, we're gonna put a little video up. My dog Chiro on Instagram. C H U R R O. Yeah, she's she's getting a little following. She oh got like forty two hundred followers. Wow. Yeah, she's crazy. I'm proud of you for being a dad. Thank you. I'm proud of you for the marathon or the ten k. Thank you. And um, yeah, thanks Madison for a great show, and uh, thanks everyone for listening. Was it good for you? Email me feedback at sexwithemily.com. Oh, guess what? We talked so much about hand jobs today. Guess what? Fleshlight is a great accoutrement, something that you can add to your hand job, something that you can, you know, give your boyfriend, be like, you know what? Close your eyes. I'm going to blindfold you. Feel this on your penis. Men can also use it. It's a male masturbation sleeve. It is the number one sex toy for men. So many of my listeners have bought them that it's kind of insane. And that one person has said to me, I didn't like it. In fact, you're all emailing me and Jarrell was like, oh my God, where has a flesh I've been my whole life? 
it, it, it looks and feels like the real deal, like you're actually having sex. How about that? Um, it, can, it can help you if you get the stamina training you need. It can help you last longer in bed. Um, go to sexwithemily.com, click on the flashlight banner, use code EMILY, and you get a free bottle of their award-winning flash lube. So check it out today. Thanks for listening.